Welcome to the Global Missions Podcast, a program for Christ followers who want to participate more effectively in God's work, both at home and to the ends of the earth. Visit us at globalmissionspodcast.com to find show notes, resources, and previous episodes, or to suggest a particular topic or guest you would like to hear featured on the program. You can also engage with us through Twitter and Facebook. We would love to hear from you. And now, here's your host, Rob Magwood, better known to his friends as Mags. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Global Missions Podcast. On today's episode, we'll be talking about the personal impact that short-term missions can have on pastors who participate on short-term mission teams, and of course, the impact that then has on the churches they lead. Our guest is Pastor Mario Villanueva, who serves as the pastor of outreach at Morningstar Church in Toronto, Ontario. And our conversation will draw on principles and wisdom and experience from his many years serving in missions. Just before we get to the interview, we'd like to share with you this missions resource. Ignite your passion for the world. The Jaffray Center is made up of people like you and me who want to engage the world around them in new and meaningful ways. Through collaborative project development, training, and research projects, the Jaffray Center seeks to rekindle and ignite a passion for God's unending concern for people. To learn more about us, visit www.jaffrayglobal.com. And now, here's today's interview. Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Global Missions Podcast. Today, our topic is going to consider the impact of short-term missions, particularly on pastors. And I'm very pleased that our guest today is Pastor Mario Villanueva of Morningstar Christian Fellowship in Toronto, Ontario, where he and Raquel, his wife, serve in the role of Pastor of Outreach Ministries. Mar, welcome to the program. Thank you, Max. It's my honor to be part of your podcast and it's a wonderful thing to reconnect. Yes, to hear how the Lord uh, have used short-term missions on my part, on my life, and for many others who have connected and used this short-term mission to enhance the global ministry of the church. Mm-hmm. Well, just before we get going, I want to add in here what a special interview this is for me, because as a college student, way back in the late 80s, if you can imagine that, in the early 1990s, a shout out to Briarcrest Bible College, I participated on a short-term mission trip to the Philippines, and for my internship, the Lord put me into the lives and into the home of Mar and Raquel. And what a great blessing it was, because Pastor Mario was there to disciple me as I learned and uh, participated in the ministry there. In fact, on the on the website, Mar, I'm going to put a picture of you and I way back. That was 27 years ago. You still have that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to share a picture there just for fun. And I know that's a remembrance mostly for Mar and I, but I call him Kuya Mar, brother Mar, big brother Mar. But a reminder for those who are listening, how the Lord uses incidents like that. He arranges relationships and friendships and guides our lives through that. And I thank the Lord for you, Mar, and for Raquel and how he has used you both in our lives. It's our pleasure and we are also grateful to the Lord through that short-term mission that you we're a part of that truly have impacted your life and our lives as well. Well, praise the Lord. Pastor Mar was born into a Christian home in a Muslim area in the southern Philippines. He grew up and studied in the Philippines at Phoebus, right, Mar? At Phoebus College of Bible. Mm-hmm. And for a season after serving in the Philippines, he and his wife Raquel served at church planting missionaries in Madrid, Spain. And now the Lord has brought them to live in Toronto, where they serve at Morningstar Christian Fellowship. And they have three children and now a grandson, Mar. That's correct. So, Mar, you are now serving as the pastor of Outreach Ministries at Morningstar. It's located in a very multicultural city, the city of Toronto. What does your role include? It includes our local outreach, at the same time, our global outreach. Uh, local outreach, we run like Alpha. We 
we do reach out to our community through what we call our small groups. Most recently, we started what we call site area, trying to start five more new churches in, in different areas of our city. I thank the Lord that uh, it, it was instrumental to start those five areas. And then doing also, like as I mentioned, Alpha ministry here at our church. It's uh, also just just reaching out to the community. We also encourage the members to be a part of our short-term mission nationally, like here in Canada, like uh, for the last few years, I led the team to go to Monetteville, to Quebec with our members. And and this coming uh, July, 8 to 15, we have about 17, 18 people going to Fort McMary just to assist them with their door-to-door evangelism in the evening. They have a soup kitchen and then uh, also uh, like Bible camp during this uh, next uh, few weeks in the summer. So we're grateful for, for this work of the Lord through local outreach of our of our church, Morning Star Christian Fellowship. You mentioned about the, the multi-ethnicity of this church. Yes, it is because there are about 74 nationalities congregating in our church. And then we're excited that uh, one Syrian family whom we sponsor as our uh, refugee of our church will be joining. So that's added to another dimension of our multi-ethnicity of the church. A global mission, I am also handling the many missionaries we have here, maybe 30 missionaries and mission organization. But at the same time, our focus is more of leadership training of nationals, so different projects that we have in different countries like the Philippines, like uh, Central America, India, Nigeria, and Kenya. So we are quite a busy, busy church here with regards to our local mission as well as our global mission. I'll say. And uh, in Canada, it reminded me, actually, of being witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the very ends of the earth. And it's all unfolding in part through Morningstar. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to talk particularly about the short-term mission element that you've mentioned. And I just wonder how you see short-term missions really benefiting your church. Why and how is it benefiting Morningstar to be involved in short-term missions? Well, it benefits our church in three areas. For example, for for those who are involved or going for a short-term mission, their lives will, will, will be impacted. Their priorities will be straightened out. And when during our short-term mission, we are also studying the book that we call from the first principle series, Participating in the Mission of the Church. Mm-hmm. This all really enhanced their sensitivity, their involvement into both local mission and to and also the global mission so th- for the participants it's impacting them uh, as when they come back from the short term mission mm-hmm. they will be involved in one way or another in, in mission they can be a part of uh, your mission committee uh, as a matter of fact we are just incorporating one of our mission committee members Lord willing, in the next few months because of her experience also in the short-term mission. And it also is impacted the church that receive us. Like, for example, when you went to the Philippines in, in Baliwag and I was the uh, I was leading you there, I was leading the church and, and the church has this many new believers to be discipled. And, and then you were there. It impacted the church because even just before you left, these new believers began coming or attending the church there, the new church that we are establishing. And so it it impacted the church there, but also it impacted me as a pastor who is training you there and how the partnership of the short-termers and the local church that receive the short-termers. Really, it's just a multiple impact that uh, that could happen to uh, when you participate in an organized, I would say probably I, make, I, mean, I want to make sure This should be included an organized, planned, well, short-term mission so that you will see the the result of this. Mm -hmm. I appreciate what you've described here is going to be a care-filled process 
So it's intentional that you're benefiting the goers, the church on the field, and the leaders there, as well as hopefully the community among which that ministry is taking place. That's going to take a lot of care. I really appreciate that you're thinking about the value in the sending church, the home church, after the short-term trip is done. You've got somebody coming from short-term missions, and they're going to serve on the committee now, for example. Yes, exactly. And of course, we understand that not everyone who goes on a short-term mission will become part of the committee, but there are other ways that will bear fruit in their lives, right? I agree, and some of this will be partnering in the mission of the church in probably praying and also probably supporting financially. I'd like to zoom in just a little bit on the participation of pastors in short-term missions, Mar. You yourself are a pastor. You're committed to this. Why is that? Why do you think pastors should consider going on short-term mission trips? I believe there is a big role or place of the pastor going into short-term mission because if you want your your church to be mission-minded, both local and global, you should model it. You should be excited about it. You should see for yourself what is out there and maybe visiting your missionary over there and and see what they are doing so that when you come back, you have that fresh and experience with, with your missionary. So mm-hmm. participating as a pastor, participating in a short-term mission, you are modeling in your church that how exciting it is to be involved with, with missions. Mm-hmm. So to me, we should be a role model in our church. And that's why when, when I call about the project or uh, every time we have we are encouraging the church to, to be involved. I just stand there and make one announcement. Lo and behold, in just a couple of weeks, my my goal of, say, 15 to 20 people, they are flocking there. I said, I, can, I just turning them down, some of them, because there is a, a certain number of people that I just needed. So it, because I am a pastor and I have experienced it and, sh- and, and come back and share what what the team have experienced, it's really, uh, it energize the whole church with regards to uh, mission. That's good. I wonder, and I re- realize we're trusting the Lord to lead and nobody should feel pressured inappropriately here, but is this something that every pastor should consider? Every pastor should have a role to, to play in, in the church. But in our case, we, we have multiple pastors. When, when I share our experience and Almost all of the pastors would like to say, oh, I'd like to be a part of that. I'd like to be a part of this. But we realized, and I said, well, you have your role to be played in the church. And Mm -hmm. you can be a partner of this. If you cannot go by just encouraging your other members of the church when they are talking to you to be prayerful or, yeah, not every pastor probably, but you can play a, a certain role in just enhancing the participation of all members to to the mission of the church. Very good. Wise, wise re- response. Mm-hmm. Mara, you already talked a little bit about some of the impacts. They come back with enthusiasm. Uh, they come back with vision for ministry, these pastors. What are some of the possible types of short-term ministry that pastors can consider? How can they get involved? Yes, uh, they can start with uh, just reconnecting or connecting with their missionaries on the field. When you are trying to connect with your missionary that you are already supporting, it's a a two-way blessing. You are indeed interested with with not just giving your money or praying, but you're really interested to what impact that your missionary is is doing into the field where they are assigned. And so to me, that's... uh, the first step that they would start considering, connecting with your missionaries, uh, ask them if they they can receive a few from your church, maybe start with uh, two to five people from your church and see what project they can offer you so that you can not only enhance uh, your involvement with, with that missionary, but the impact that your partner with your missionaries in the field can also take effect 
Well, let me just uh, jump in here for a minute and say what an encouragement that is to the missionary too. Just to speak as someone who served on the field, to have the engagement Mm -hmm. of the sending church, the home church or churches, Mm -hmm. and particularly to have uh, leaders engage is such an encouragement to the workers on the field. This is something, it will just bear fruit over and over and over again. Yeah, that's that's correct. I, we also do that here at our church. For example, this coming summer, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to Fort McMurray. The reason why we are involved there is because uh, they're not really technically our missionaries, but they were our former young people who are now serving in that church, two of them. Mm-hmm. And, and so we'd like to just continue to connect that that relationship we have. But we have a project that we did last year in Quebec, which we are supporting this missionary doing church planting there. And we reconnected with them and said, hey, what can we do this summer? And what are your summer uh, evangelistic program in your community? We would like to uh, assist you and help you. And they were so glad that we, we are really serious in, in our involvement with them. And so they said, well, we will be hel- helping the community moving their staff because in Quebec on June 30 and July the 1st is a day of moving. Their lease is terminated, so they have to move to the next house or the next apartment. And, and so... The whole province is so busy and they are running out of a U-Haul to rent. We bring one U-Haul truck from Toronto and go there and help them for a week. And they felt encouraged, felt encouraged. And we just came home with just uh, being so full of blessing that we see these people receive help. We, We call it. Let's adorn the gospel. Let's uh, our missionaries. There's planting this church. Let's continue to bless these people by our physical help that we can. Mm. Use. So uh, visiting your own mission workers is one type of trip that a pastor can engage in. What are some other possibilities? Other possibilities is like as I mentioned, we have a project in different countries training nationals, uh, national pastors. We train our leaders here to know how to facilitate and use these materials that we that I mentioned a while ago, the first principle series from Bell International, so that the pastors who are in that country can, can receive the training. So sometimes we have this five days to one week training. We are bringing all these local pastors in one place and we go there to, to train these pastors and then we send them off to, to their respective ministries and churches. So God is, is, is really using this short-term mission that we have to enhance, to prepare these pastors to, to train other local pastors. Mm-hmm. Well, I can affirm that too from our experience when we served in the former Soviet Union. The very substantial impact of pastors coming and helping to teach. And in some cases, I, this is, I mean, English speaking pastors would come and we'd provide a translator, of course, but they could actually reuse material that they had already used in their own uh, worship services, sometimes a series or other types of teaching that they could reuse it. And so they didn't need to totally invent the material. I hope that sparks some ideas as well for the pastor's who might be listening, that it doesn't mean developing another series, but could we reuse something that you've already prepared to be a blessing and to be effective in teaching uh, national believers? Any other thoughts on the types of trips, Mario, that pastors might consider? We believe in the local church. And like the most recent one I mentioned, examples of training national pastors, it's through their, because we believe in, in, in the church that they are uh, a part of that they will be strengthened the greatest need now in global mission is training of local pastors so we'll re- reinforce their their ministry so like for example uh, about a year and a half ago uh, we went to dominica here in the caribbean island and we are envisioning another cohort project of training these local pastors in that 
country. But there was a hurricane that passed through more than uh, a year ago, maybe two years now. So what we did is said, we want to bless you. We want to reinforce what you're doing in your community. And they sent us the the effect of the devastation of that hurricane and and some homes were were destroyed and so i said okay will do you, do you have an idea on uh, how many homes that we can help they presented us the project and the cost so uh, like a construction team can be another idea you can form but working with the churches that are are doing church planting or or revitalizing their their ministry in that church. So again, about a year ago, I led a team of I guess, 10 to 15 people. I forgot the number now, but we raised about uh, 45,000 uh, here for, as a church and built three homes in, in Dominica. Again, it's not just doing this practical help, but it is connected through a church. Yes. And and that's what we, we are excited about that we can do uh, a, a discipleship training or training of pastors. And also just like, as I mentioned in Quebec, where we have the physical help that we can help in the community because it's connected with the church and we want that church to, to really have an impact into their community. And in Dominica, as I mentioned, it's more of construction team. Very good. Well, if someone was listening to this podcast, Pastor Mar. And they were saying, you know what, I should consider this short-term mission trip. Maybe a pastor is listening. What advice do you have for them? What are some of the first steps they should take to get started in this? I would suggest that they would maybe do the study of the booklet that we, we, we use. We call it the Participating in the Mission of the Church. You can find these materials through Build International in AIM, Iowa. B-I-L-D, Build, Build International. And also, just go to your to Global Mission podcast. Uh, I think this is helpful for, uh, for them to, to hear testimonies impacted because of short-term mission. And they can connect with me, connect with San International and other mission agencies that are open to short-term mission. Mm. And I'll just mention this again, that the resources that Mar has mentioned, we will include in the show notes, as well as some links that might be helpful to those considering a short-term mission as a pastor. I wonder, Mar, if you could imagine yourself sitting in a room now with some of your peers. You are a pastor speaking to pastors, and you're talking about this short-term mission topic. What would you want to say to them? I would say that be a part of it. Brothers and and sisters, uh, I'm here being able to benefit the church that I started or we planted back in the Philippines. We benefited uh, the blessing of receiving short-term mission. And as you follow through that testimony of, say, Rob, for example, who became now the national director of Senate International, he, he counted the impact in his life because he was a part of that short-term mission. And when I was in Spain, we were a recipient of people also, like Muggs, who attended a, a, a Bible school. And we were there also doing a church planting in Spain. And the same token, some other pastors or churches would not want to receive them. But I said, hey, I want to receive this short-term mission. I know there's a great blessing to have them in your church. It's good, great to be a part of short-term mission, just to model it with your people, your excitement, your involvement to mission. So don't hesitate to, to be a part and inquire more how you can be involved with the short-term mission, both in your church directly or through, through the other mission organizations that have the program. Well, there we have some very direct encouragement from a pastor to pastors. Don't hesitate because it could be a great blessing for you yourself and your ministry, as well as for your congregation. Mar, I want to say thank you on behalf of our listeners for the time you've spent with us here. If someone wanted to follow up some more with you, for example, a missions committee, or maybe even another pastor who wants to speak to a pastor, how could they be in touch with you? They can in touch with me by uh, phoning our church, uh, Morningstar Christian Fellowship, 
Uh, the number is 416-281-4138. Uh, and they want to speak to me. Uh, my extension would be 3230. Very good. And we will also include that information in the show notes. Mar, thank you again for spending this time. Thank you for your energy and faithful encouragement for the church and pastors to be involved in short-term missions. You're welcome, Max. Good to connect with you. And you are the great example of how short-term mission impacted a young people from either Bible school or from a church. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Well, we hope you've been encouraged by this episode and that it's helped to shed some light on the potential benefits of pastors participating personally in short-term missions. Remember, you can find the show notes on our website at globalmissionspodcast.com. And if you've enjoyed this episode, we'd sure appreciate a review on iTunes, as this helps potential new listeners decide if they'll give us a try. And as our regular listeners know, we're always glad to hear from you. You may have suggested topics or interviews you'd like us to consider. That's it for today. The Global Missions Podcast is produced by the Jaffrey Center for Global Initiatives and Send International of Canada in collaboration with other like-minded agencies. On behalf of our entire team, thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again in two weeks when we'll continue to explore this grand adventure of being Christ's witnesses to the ends of the earth.